Challenge Aging. Today we're going to tackle the biceps and create the best biceps possible. And I just wanted to let you know also that the biceps, right, the biceps are two joint muscle. So the range of motion for the biceps, unlike just doing these, the range of motion is from here. This is full range of motion for the biceps. From here to here to here. Now you're working the biceps fully, so you have to change the position of the elbow to really effectively work those biceps. So now that you know the full range of motion of the biceps and you understand specifically what we want, you have to change the position of the bicep as you do these exercises. Okay, so people think biceps, that the primary function of the bicep is flexion of the elbow. This is not true because if you look at the bicep, right, I can flex, I can flex my elbow, but my muscle is still long. You see how that's contracting? The muscle still stays long. But now, watch this, right? I'm not flexing the elbow. Watch what happens. You see how the muscle shortens? See the muscle shortens? What I'm doing is supination of my forearm. So the primary function of the bicep is not flexion but is supination of your forearm. So if you grab a dumbbell, right, and you grip it to the outside, what happens? Gravity wants to do this. So you have to work harder at keeping your palm up. That's going to make that bicep just work so much harder. Just a simple trick. The exercise that we have to do, we're going to put the elbows in a posterior position. So the elbows are going to be back. Because it's a two-joint muscle, the bicep, which is attached here above the shoulder joints, now are going to be lengthened maximally, okay? Now you can work on in or out a little bit, doesn't matter because you can work the in or out of bicep, but I really don't focus on that. What you want to do is you want to start from a position where the elbows are back to where the elbows are in the middle to where the elbows are in the front. The first one, we're going to work with the elbows back. Now I've got three weights here, so we're going to do a strip down. Basically that means you're going from heavy weights, go as many as you can till you can't do any more, Drop the weight, go lighter weight, do as many as you can do, you can't do any more, and it's really burning now, that burning is great, to the lightest one, do it again, do you can't go any more, and stop. Okay, here we go. Keep your spine neutral, belly button tight, elbows back, and curl. Now make sure that those elbows don't move. You don't want the elbow moving forward. Try to get full range of motion. And starting to burn. Good. And stop. Good. Drop it. Go to the next weight. Here we go. And. If you notice on my position also, and where I'm gripping the biceps, it's to the outside. It's really burning now. Grab the last ones. You see I'm gripping to the outside because now the dumbbell wants to pull me in. And you got to remember, primary function of the bicep. And stop. Good job. We change the position of the elbow and we're going to do it standing up. But now the elbow is pretty much going to stay midline of the body. What I want you to really also pay attention to is your spinal position. Right? Neutral spine position. Straight line from your ear to the middle of the hips. And you see people with biceps using weights that they have no business of doing by bending their back and then bringing the weight up and arching their back. You know, if you want to have big biceps and blown discs, then go ahead. But I would advise you to maintain neutrality of the spine. Do not arch or flex. Stay even, maintain neutral spine, keep your belly button tight, elbows in, and now curl. One, again, my grip is to the outside. Two, three, good. Four, nice wide stance, bend your knees slightly. Seven, and go till you're burning. Nine, good, and 10, 11, and 12. Good, now from this position, hold the weights here. Come on down, keep your spine neutral, bring the weight all the way up, slowly lower it. Bring it halfway. 
See, now you're using momentum to kick the weights up and you're working eccentrically. Lower the weights slowly, all the way down, bring them halfway, and kick it up. You can do a few more this way without compromising your spinal alignment. You are stronger eccentrically when you lower the weight than when you are concentrically. And stop. Now we go to the last position. We've done the back, the middle, now we go anterior forward. Right? So it's shortened space here. You're hitting the biceps all three different angles. Your range of motion is perfect. You've learned about the supination. I like to use the cables for this one because it helps keep my elbows forward. Also like to use ropes because again the rope wants to pull the palm down. You have to work really hard to keep your palm up. That works that bicep even harder. Use a good weight. Stand. Belly button tight. Neutral spine position. Keep the elbows forward. And now curl it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. We've done the back, the middle, and the front. Now remember to wait sixty seconds in between each set. So you allow for adenosine triphosphate or ATP restoration to occur. 60 minutes should give you plenty of time to really tackle the next exercise until you go to a burning sensation. And that burning again creates lactic acid, more growth hormone, allows you to grow better. This exercise is really going to isolate the bicep. Again, we're going to do a strip down, which means we're going to go from heavier weight to light. I like to use, again, the cable uh, thing. You can use tubing if you want to. But it's easier if you have a cable thing. Most gyms will have this. So, alrighty. Find a good position, keep your spine neutral, bring the elbow in right on top of the knee, and now just curl it in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Drop it, lighten up the load. Here we go. And one, two, three, four. Try to get full range of motion. Five, six, seven, and eight. Lighten it up. Here we go. And one, really burning now. For some reason, for me, biceps, working my bicep, hurts more than pretty much any other exercise because of the burning. They just hurt like crazy. And also you're working the forearm here and you're working your flexor carpiolaris, right? Which is your flexors right here. The Popeye muscle is also working as you do these. Of course you gotta do this side, then the other side. because it's rested longer. Right away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Lighten it up. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Burning like crazy. Six, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Hold it. Release. Woo. Okay, this is the last exercise for the bicep in this series. Right now, we're, again, we're working a different range of motion where the bicep's out to the side. It's going to give you a different resultant, and the cable should be about shoulder level, maybe a little lower. Keep the elbow stable, and now flex and pull. One, two, three. The cable 
it's trying to pull my body to the side. So all my obliques and my core has to stabilize like crazy and it's working also. And nine and ten. Now I want to tell you the load. You want to do 10 to 15 repetitions, right? If you can't do eight, the weight's too heavy. If you do more than 15, the weight's too light. So figure out something in between. you have to do one muscle of the opposing, or one exercise, I'm sorry, of the opposing muscle group. That creates reciprocal inhibition. And what that means is basically, as you're now working the opposite muscle, you see the biceps now, don't they feel, they feel really tight and kind of pumped up? Well, you gotta realize that muscle contraction, as the muscle contracts, the blood flow diminishes after this initial burst that you've gotten. So what you wanna do now is work the opposite muscle because as you work the opposite muscle and contract here, this one now has to lengthen. As you lengthen, you increase the blood flow and allow the muscle to relax. So you're going to get much better results if at the end of your bicep exercise, you do one set of the opposite muscle. Now there's two ways to do this. For you advanced people, you can do dips, and I'm going to do those. For the ones that are not so advanced, you can start off with just a, a dip on the bench. So here, here, find a uh, tricep bar, come on up, and just do dips. One, two, three, four. Again, keep your spine neutral, bring your knees up. I like to lean forward a little bit to take excess shear off the shoulder joint. Anywhere, eight to ten repetitions. And then, for an easier version of this exercise, here, here, grab any bench, sit down. You want to bend the elbows, keep your butt close to the bench, right? Don't move it away. Your feet closer to the bench is easier. Your feet further away. You're changing the moment arm, and now there is more load for your triceps to work. Makes it harder. So you can start out there. Bring your feet in as you get fatigued and do a few more repetitions. Thank you so much for watching. Again, this is Carl from Challenge Aging. We are going to give you a whole multitude of different exercise programs, right? Working all different parts of the body. We've already done the abs on the beach, biceps here. Look forward to our next video series.